Hey, thanks for joining us for this episode of the Gig Harbor Flycast. And today I am with my friend Mark Reisler. And we, uh, if you are just tuning in, we had another episode. And this is kind of a continuation of that conversation. And I had more burning questions. And so, like, we're not done, Mark. Okay. <laughs> he thought he was getting I out of here. I do it for but, another beer. Oh, yep, you brought one. Yep. There we go. So, <laughs> yeah, round, round two on the podcast, round yes. two on beers. And, Perfect. And, um, yeah, so we're uh, we're all excited about this. Okay, so um, the Missouri River. I, I mean, I have found it. I mean, I love hosting trips out there yep. because I can bring anglers that have been fishing for thirty years and they're like blown away and they love it. And then I can also bring anglers that like they've been out fly fly casting four times or eight times. Yeah. They're like, and they're I mean they're blown away and they're successful. So you know, for beginner anglers that um, that are just starting off with fly fishing. And they, they, they're, they're like, man, this is really cool. And they want to come out. Maybe they're listening to this or maybe they're following you online sure. or whatever. Um, and, oh, by the way, I, I love, uh, just, like, just following you on, on Instagram and, and just seeing, like, your, your fishing updates like, on the river. Yeah. I thought those are great. That's, I'm, yeah. That, I'm like, that, I, should, yeah. I should do that. But I'm like, but then I'd be, like, copying Mark. No, and, you wouldn't. No. Uh, okay, no People would like that. Yeah, I would watch those. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah right. I, I, <laughs> I always, I always watch them. I tell you, I always watch yeah, them. Those they, are the shop good. guys do. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they love it. It's great. So, so beginner angler. Yes. Like, what time of year? And then what? What can they expect? You know, what? Yeah. What, what would it like a an, like a normal day look like for that angler? So, well, you know, one of the things I always tell when people are like, "What do you think about the Missouri?" If you could say one thing, what would you say? And I have for a long time said, you know, the greatest thing about the Missouri River is that it's great for any, for all skill sets. So it's really great for people who've never fished or just getting into the sport to the intermediate, to the advanced, to the expert. It's sure. also so on the bottom end, in the middle end, middle end, there's not a middle end, but in the middle and and for those intermediate advanced and for the for the top end angler, for that guy who just loves to hunt heads strictly, um, we've got challenges at every level for that. Yeah. And you can have success at every level, which is really, I think, unique about the Missouri. So even if you don't have, you know, shoot, if you've just really started casting uh, or in the infancy of, of the sport, yeah. um, great to have success. So you're gonna be able to catch a lot of fish. Because if you're going to fish with a guide, he's going to put you in successful situations. So he's going yes. to put you in an environment where you are going to have lots of hookups. You're going to lose a lot too, as you know, those fish are hot and, yeah. and jump and running. But what a great opportunity for um, that person to have a lot of success playing fish, fighting fish. You know, I, I big fish. It, it takes like, longer to learn yeah. if you go out and you don't catch them. Right. Yeah. It, it's so this is the training grounds yeah, for. Yes. Uh, oh no, this is great training grounds. So, so some people so, aren't familiar with like yeah. what the river actually looks like. Okay. They're used to driving over a lot of our stuff, and so like. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I think one of the things that that I would add is that for that uh, that I've experienced out there is that the guides they don't want you to cast far. No. I mean, they're it's amazing how close these boats can get to the fish. So you yeah. fish out of the boat. You're not. You're usually not bank fishing. There's a couple times they, if anglers want to bank fish, they can absolutely in some different spots. Yep. So the guys are very accommodating yep. about that. And it's great. Then we use the boats from A to B, get out of the boat, right. fish on a bar or a bank or but something. But if you're yeah. fishing out of the boat, especially fishing subsurface, yep. like you're great way. I mean, to how do far it. away? I mean, it's a 15 oh, foot shoot. cast. You like, don't want to be to the window over there. You don't want to be 25 feet because your right. your fishing guide has got you. We're fishing on very specific shelf lines and edges, structure points. So we want those, you know, those flies to be, you know, on the edge or on the, you know, on the corner, you know, so there's pretty specific lanes that we're looking for. Yeah. And we are just looking for, um, skill sets like really good long drift, you know, so having that thing move down the, the river as if there's nothing attached to it. Yeah. So those are the skill sets you're building there. The cast, because there's lots of repetitions, which is great. Drifting skills, um, reading river skills. I mean, you're learning so much, as you know, when you're in that boat environment. Sure. There's a discussion between both anglers and the fishing guide or whoever's rowing. And, and uh, so it's really a great environment for not only catching, but learning a ton, you know, yeah. which is really, really important. I mean, you want to learn something on when you go to a great big, it's a great big river. It's not like you said, like like uh, these freestones here in Washington State. It's like the it's a small Columbia. <laughs> oh, I mean, a, a, a real a, small a, a, Columbia. A, 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 yeah, but I mean it'd be like a really big creek. Yeah, right, so right, right. it's a hundred yards wide. 
um, four to six feet average depth and goes for, we have 35 miles of fishable water where we're at. So, and then so lots of different reaches and those have different characteristics and, and personalities themselves. So really a great place, uh, yeah, for any skill set, but definitely for the beginner cause, think, because you get lots of action. I think yeah. one of the things I appreciate, I mean, so the river's low gradient comes out of a mm -hmm, dam. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I really appreciate about it, about it when you float it, um, it is a really peaceful float, you know. I mean, and that's not true of a lot of rivers that we no, have over on this no, side. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, so, you know there's a lot, there's some Moving. rivers that we, you know, that we're floating, and, and clients are like, like we're, we're going down that. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, hold well, on. Yeah, yeah well, we're gonna make it. Yeah, there's life jackets <laughs> in the, in the boat that we'll right. throw to you. Yeah. You know, what I mean, but. Right. Um, but it's a it's a peaceful river, peaceful yeah, experience. Yeah. And I would the thing that I, I mean that I really like too is that because the water is flat, mm -hmm. uh, it's not like super uh, you know broken and stuff like that. It, that fish, it's more effective for an angler to sit yep. than for them standing up casting. And so for like for older anglers, um, you know, limited mobility people, stuff like that. You know, I mean, to be able to sit in a, it's a high, it's a pedestal chair, yep, yep. but to be able to sit and be able to cast, it's such yep. a comfortable way to fish that, um, that, I mean, it's, I mean, and I would even say to take a kid fishing, I mean, ki kids will just rail on fish out there. Oh, yeah. Like, I no, can't wait to take my kids absolutely. out there. Absolutely. Like, no. Something yeah. Like, so. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. Like I said, all, all skill sets, all ages. It's, yeah, it is a river. I mean, I have some, some, some older clients. Um, I don't really right now that I'm in between the, the 90 year old clients. I don't have any nineties, but I have several eighties yeah. from the Seattle area. I have a, a, a number sure. of them from the Seattle area that, yeah. And so, you know, you're sitting in the boat and those guys are, and, and, uh, um, very, very comfortable for them. It allows people to fish longer. Yeah. Right. We are not in a wilderness situation. We're kind of far away from Helen and Great Falls, but I mean, we're not in a deep wilderness where the cell phone doesn't work. So it's certainly um, Wait, my, my, pretty accessible. My, my cell phone doesn't work there. Oh yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> There's been my, more mine than does, one. Mine does sometimes. Yeah. There's been <laughs> more than one night where I've been uh, sitting on a bench at like 9:30 yeah. at night, out in front of Mark's yeah. uh, shop, like trying to connect it's to their little hotspot to yeah. try to. You know, because I'm trying to do payroll on my phone or some, you know, it's, some it's ridiculous It's usually important thing, like. for somebody on this end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I'm like, I'm like, oh, God, this has got to work. Yep. <laughs> okay, so what about anglers that, um, what about intermediate anglers? You know, they, they, they can cast. And, um, and one of the yeah. things about casting that I've heard you say over and over again is stop the rod up high. I mean, so many people, yeah. they, they drop the rod down. And it was really interesting. I was telling someone about this recently. We just got back from a trip to Cuba uh -huh. and we took a ton of video, like more video than I'd ever uh, oh, wow. taken yeah, before. Yeah. And uh, my boat partner, this guy, Eric, is just a great dude. And he knows he knows camera stuff. Like, yeah. so he, he was it was great to share share boat, boat with him. And what I noticed was if we were if either of us were fall, like, I mean, we had some some pretty crummy weather and we were having to yeah, like, yeah. like throw intermediate lines and, and blind cast. If we were doing that. We, I mean, we'd stop up nice and high. We'd have a great loop on the front, like just, I mean, just making bomb casts. It was yeah. great. And then as soon as like a permit showed up with the floating line or we're, we're fishing to like a big bone fish or whatever, and you see the fish and instead of stopping up high, we would, dr we would drop the, I mean, the rod, you can note, you could, it was a noticeable difference that the that rod would wild, drop yeah. lower. And the, on the Missouri, you have so much, you know, you're, you're, you're casting the specific targets. And so yeah. I was thinking about, I mean, is it about the target that people drop the rod to? I'm, or? I'm constantly thinking about it and talking about it too, to try to crack the, you know, Pandora's box, yeah. try to crack the code. Well, you know, we regress when we, when we have, you know. When, when there's it, fish. It, yeah, just like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. put a skier, at, yeah, a skier on a really steep hill, you immediately know what their shortcomings are. And, and same, we put a fish in front of a, a, any of us anglers and yeah. we immediately our shortcomings show up. So you just regress to defensive, freaked out fishing style. The key is to fish right. more and you'll be less freaked out. Right. <laughs> well, I, I don't know what that is. That's such a, it's such a great question, Blake. I, I don't know. I, I know I do it. I, we all do it. Yeah. When we are in a pressure situation. It's the pressure. It, it's we, yeah. Unless you are rock solid, you fall apart. Right. Yeah. 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 
I, I permit um, is a, I mean, it's well, is a great equalizer. I always thought, yeah, right. yeah I mean, that's yeah. What I've noticed is, falls is, is like I have, I've had so many days skunked fishing for permit. Yeah, that um, it it finally got to the point. Like I think it was like twenty nine days skunked. That's a good run. So yeah. I, had, I had gotten like two fish in like twelve days, one on day six, second on day twelve, and then twenty nine days skunked. Oh, so you'd and, had so you'd had some success early. Oh, I've had. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, so yeah. then you're on this 29 day. Okay, I'm with, I, yeah, yeah. I was in a drought for 29, yeah, 29, 29 days. days. Yeah, and I, and just those last couple of days, I th- my casting got better, and it's because at that point, I think I just, I, I mean, I, I don't think I believed it would ever happen, right. and so, just didn't care, and and so like you know, because usually I would see a permit, my heart would be racing, and my casting would just just go horrible, and, yes. I, and it just I would melt down, you know, and then and then I finally just. You know, I'm like, oh yeah, cool. There's a permit. I'm excited, but you're not going to catch it yeah, anyway. I'm not so, going yeah. to catch yeah. it. You know, and then it'd be like, like perfect yeah. cast. I'm like, I'm like, oh, we have a shot at this yeah. thing, and yeah. and it swim off. You know, but but then yeah. but then I got one. You yeah. know, so it was. Yeah. That's <laughs> so, great. So I, I think maybe for anglers, yes, you know, to focus, but to be calm, and not to get too, too ahead of themselves. When they see a fish rising, because I, I mean, one thing I remember on the Missouri, yeah, my first day it I was with a guy. Out, yeah, I remember Mike saying, saying you're gonna catch a. F-. He, he he calmed me down. He said because there was lots of fish. Yeah, there, and you could tell there were big ones. He's like, yeah, he's like you're gonna catch a fish. But if you make the first cast count, yeah, you're gonna get the biggest one. So just take your time and make a good cast. Yeah. and the way he said it was calming and. And I'm like, okay. You know, I mean, it just put, he helped put me in the place where I could make the cast, make the mend, and that first fish ate in on the first cast. And it was, it was like one of the, yeah, that's one great. of the best fish yeah, I've ever yeah. caught on the Missouri, you yeah, know? I mean, yeah. So for intermediate anglers that want to come out, they want to fish, they're going to, they're going to, before they come, they're going to practice and they're going to, they're like, okay, Mark and Blake said, keep that raw tip up yeah, high. Yeah. They're going to do that. Um, I mean, when's a, gr- a good time that they should come out and, and what are they fishing for? Or what should they be expecting? And uh, what would an average day look like? Yeah. And, and I mean, the, the answer to the first question is you should come out when you can. When you can. Well, I mean, isn't that always the answer? That's the sure. answer. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know if there's a specific time for intermediate. I mean, if you're a real snobby dry fly guy, there's some times when I'd yeah, inter- well, we yeah. can talk about. Let's talk about that uh, next. So first yeah. hit intermediate, and then let's talk about yeah. snobby dry yeah. fly guys. Yeah, I don't know for intermediate. Because I'm getting there. Yeah, yeah, I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's a full circle. You'll pat. You'll again come back around. Um, um, yeah, it's a perpetual um, journey. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, it, you know, it's like I said, it's a consistent fishery. Yeah. So you're get, most of the time you're going to have some dry fly opportunities, but. You know, May is a great May is a pretty pretty. It's it's it is a overlooked month. I mean, I would say even for, with that high water. Yeah, because we really? that's usually more in June. Hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a late May or June I- issue. Um, I don't think we're gonna have any this year. It's what knock on wood. I I don't know, um, but uh, I don't think we're going to. Um, well, fall's my favorite time of the year. My favorite kind of dry fly stuff is in the peak of the peak with the most people around. I mean, that is the PMD thing is crazy. Hmm. Um, but you're going to get, most of the time for that intermediate, you know, you're going to do some sort of nymphing probably in the morning time, you know, or streamer fishing if you want to do that, um, you know, and get and get some fish to hand. That's, you know, sure. that's a great confidence booster. You know, that, a lot of people love that. You get two or three fish to the boat. Then you can say like, okay, you know, I really want to dry fly fish. Yeah, yeah. But I know sometimes people are hesitant. They really want to dry fly fish the whole time, but they're like, I don't want to go spend all day learning and not catching. I, I do want to catch a couple, and I fully understand that. That's yeah. like normal behavior and, and okay. Yeah. That's why I went red fishing for after the bone fishing, permit fishing, tarpon fishing period. Yeah, I just went to I, – because I wanted to catch some. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Redfish are awesome. Yeah. So – They eat. Um, they eat. So, uh, so yeah, I usually do that. And then, you know, you're going to do a dry dropper or some sort of advanced sniffing technique. We do a short leash deal, which – so these are all building blocks, yeah. I think, in the progression of fly fishing. You know, deep nymphing, got, you know, a lot of guide assist, learning, catching fish, fighting fish, losing fish, that kind of thing. Then intermediate is – 
I want to learn a little bit more about why, why are we over here? You know, what, how are you rigging that? I mean, that's that time when your eyes are a little bit more open. You have kind of some fundamentals to build on. So yeah, then you're going to be doing some dry dropper stuff, you know, blind fishing in stuff that we, you know, so we would eat the streamer fish or blind dry fly fish, but dry dropper is really super effective with the small, super small tungsten beaded narrow diameter nymphs now that we can effectively on our resource dry dropper. The Yakima is a little different with h bigger water and, and uh, uh, riffle runs and, and just a different kind of water. The tail water is a little slower, but so now with some, some bug science, you know, some fly science, some fly technology, mm -hmm. we can effectively do that. So you can cover a couple different lanes at the same time or certainly water calm. And, and so, Are you I specifically mean, talking about like jig hook style, like yeah, check nymphing yeah, type stuff no, with just, like bigger beads? Any, and, no, just a little tiny, those little tiny, you know, bluing olives or midge fly, zebra midge or um, little green machine, you know, those little tiny little, machines. yeah, mayfly, baby mayfly yeah. stuff okay. um, off of uh, um, your atoms or your stimulator or something like that. So, you know, sure. that that's super, super fun to do with that. So the river is a great place where I don't know if, if the your timing is as important as just understanding what you want to accomplish. And if you're fishing with a guide saying, hey, here's some of the things I would like to do today. Yeah. So I think that communication is really, really important. And then they can say, Hey, here's a really great spot. Hey, let's do, let's get out of the boat here and we'll fool around do, throwing the dry dropper through this riffle run. And then we could throw a streamer, you know, come back and throw a streamer yeah. through it afterwards. So you're learning a whole bunch. So I think <clears throat> that intermediate such a great river because now the whole world is your oyster. I yeah. mean, you've got, there's so many different ways, whether you be swinging a fly with a trout spay rod, a soft tackle or a bugger or something bigger, dry dropper, streamer fishing, blind dry, techy dry, head hunting, throwing a specific fish, or just, you know, deep, deep nymphing. Yeah. So for that intermediate, there's, there's, there's all of a sudden there's a, there's a lot out there that you can do and a lot of different ways to skin the cat for sure. Yeah. But okay. What about, if you're, what about if you're advanced? You're, I mean, here's the thing I've learned Yeah. is that when you ask anglers about their, what, what their perceived love skill level sure. is, there's very few people that will say, I'm an advanced angler. Yeah. I mean, every, you know, everyone says, Mom, I'm an intermediate, right, right. but I've been doing it a long time. Yeah. Or they're like, I'm a maybe beginner to intermediate. Like yeah. people, that's where people locate yeah. themselves. And, um, and you know, they, it's, you know, there's, I think there's definitely a difference between anglers that practice casting and, and then the anglers that just fish. Yeah, and the anglers that practice casting are if, better. If you, if you've been fishing, <laughs> if you've been fly fishing for a for a while, I mean, over if you've been, I would say, if you've been fly fishing for more than a handful of years mm -hmm. and you still practice casting, you're probably an advanced angler. Oh, I would agree with you. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, because you are actually able to have some some self introspection and know that we could all improve. Right. All with right. our casting. <laughs> because I feel like people, have, uh, uh, I feel like a lot of people, they improve as an angler and they get to that intermediate place where they're, they hook fish and they're successful. Yeah. And, and, but they, I think, I think there's a stall out phase of course. there. And I think, yeah. I think one of the, the, the good things about what's going on in the fly fishing industry right now, um, with, uh, you know, right now there's a big emphasis on check nymphing and sure. uh, trout spay is, is um, has a lot of momentum behind yeah. it and still st still spay casting. And I think, you know, for anglers that are in that intermediate phase and they're not like really intentional about practicing, but when they start uh, experimenting with these other things, like they, they take up spay casting. Yeah. Well, if you take up spay casting, it improves your single hand of game because you learn about how a rod flexes and how it moves a line oh, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, and so, you know, it's so people, you know, so that right now I think there's a, in, in the industry, I feel like there's a lot of uh, things that are helping anglers move into more of a, if it, if not advanced, at least a progressed intermediate stage. Sure. Oh yeah. Um, and so, and I'm, I'm excited about that, but let, before we get into more of that, if you want to respond to that, okay. The dry fly snob guy yeah. on the Missouri. Like when, I mean, well, when is I mean, like, you, it I just, mean, there's pretty, then it gets pretty specific. I mean, you're yeah. going to be, you want, I mean, my favorite time period is the front end of the PMD. I mean, after that first week of the hatch. We're talking that, June? We're talking in June. Yeah. Okay. So historical PMD, I see the first ones, June four, five, six, seven, somewhere in there. And then a week later, it's go time. And that's the, so it's the second week of the PMD that, hmm that I'm really excited. I think that's when you catch some of their biggest brown trouts. Brown trout love a dead PMD, a rusty spinner. 
They do. They love it. They love them. <laughs> Man, I'm getting goosebumps yeah. oh, here. Yeah. You're talking yeah. about this. I want to. I mean, that's. I do take that. That's. The, I have that week off. I. Well, you know, I'm I don't already guide, thinking about like my, my kids' school week. schedule because yeah, they're right. home, they're being homeschooled right now because right. of the virus stuff. Yeah. Or whatever. I'm like. I'm like, man, we're not going down well, to the John Day until the 24th, and then I know, Oregon I know, some families are going to have an opportunity like, to take the whole. Yeah, uh, my John was talking to I some friends of his that Montana. have their kids are at home, and they are um, small business owners that have closed their businesses temporarily, yeah. and they yeah. they're just going to put their kids in the car and go to some rivers. You're going to fishing school, kids. Right. Yeah, <laughs> we'll learn you. Yeah, I'm going to teach you how to do dishes at the same time. This should be a really good trip. Yeah. <laughs> That's, oh, right. That's right. Remember I'm, your uncle? My, my he brain doesn't, is spinning He doesn't right shower. Now. We're going to do some of that. I mean, you're going to do a lot of learning. That's right. <laughs> right. Uh, oh, my gosh. So you guys came out the video a few years ago called Sipping Dries. And I, yeah. I, I love the, the one one thing. You, you This one, you had it. I mean, we had it on repeat in the shop for a while. So that's that's why I have it memorized. Yeah. It's not because I'm a creeper. But but you, you're, you're, you, were, you had a, this like... This this uh this these words of of of, uh, of wisdom to your to to parents and you said yeah. if you want your kids to be a lawyer or a doctor yeah. don't don't bring them to the Missouri That's River. right. Yeah, <laughs> it'll change their it'll, it'll change their direct their trajectory their path. Exactly, it will. It absolutely it happened to me. It like it happened to. There's a number of people that, that grabbed right. that Craig grabbed and yeah. is held hostage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, fly yeah. fishing has ruined many a lives. Yeah, so so for the snobby dudes, yeah. um, which I you know I am part of the year and another part of the year I, I just like catching fish too. But um, I do I do like throwing a dry fly. You know that June July the trico and the mayfly stuff, the spinner stuff, the spinner falls are epic as as you know and and uh, so um, you can definitely set your watch by them. So those are you know wow. there's a lot there's lots of weight access as well on the river. So you see a lot of what I call non-local locals that will come, you know, for, you know, one to eight weeks and they will be there for, wow. yeah, they'll be there for a while. Yeah. And they'll be they standing pull in a the, camper out. And they do. Out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Build a camper out. I mean, there's guys in tents. I mean, there's guys well, back that, you to, back know, to who we talked yeah. about the last episode, Gary LaFontaine. Yeah. He would, uh, he would hang out for sure. quite. I mean, yeah. Skip Morris. Skip yeah. Morris comes out yeah. and hangs out on the Missouri yeah. for yeah. No, for there's weeks. yeah still names. Yeah. I've talked to, I've talked to a number of those you know, uh, uh, famous fishing dudes right. on the Missouri on the banks or or in the bar or at Joe's or yeah. at the trout shop. I used to work for the trout shop for a long time and, and in their in their food department and uh, so had an opportunity to speak with. You know Gary LaFontaine on the porch at ad nauseum. Same with Sil Nem, Sylvester Nem's is the soft tackle fame and spinner fame, and um, and Sil has passed away now, and so is Gary. And um, but, but but two of those guys were huge influences on me. Yeah. Um, with the whiskey too. I mean there was yeah yeah lots of low balls of whiskey. Gary LaFontaine was a great dude. He would talk to you as long as you poured him whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean most of my mentors you know have that in common. Well, I mean, I've, they been, will, I've yeah, been giving yeah, you beers, so yeah. I mean, it's... <laughs> now, this is where I've, I am uh, excited about this lager, and this is where I'm at. It used yeah. to be just really crappy whiskey. Now it's <laughs> Ballast Point Lager. Yeah, That's a good lager. Oh, I, I love a lager. Yeah, that's so, where my flavor uh, point is. Yeah, I'm, I'm drinking the Georgetown Bodizafa IPA, and um, Georgetown's kind of a shop favorite here, and it's... Mm. I mean, uh, they they do a ton of stuff for conservation. Oh, and, they do. Yeah. yeah. So we we host like a big film event that, and we raise money for the Wild Steeler Coalition. Yep. And these guys donate the beer oh, and like and they, and they they donate all the time for different conservation things and stuff like that. And so Roger owns, uh, Ron, owns um, but is, uh, owns uh, Georgetown. He comes in the shop uh, oh, on yeah. occasion. Where is that? Where is Georgetown Brewery? Up in out of? Seattle area. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, Georgetown, Seattle. Okay. Yeah, super yeah. close to like yeah. the old Rainier. Yeah. Um, uh, a brewery and so, okay. um, yeah. but I mean, yeah, I mean they make delicious beer, but um, but they're super fishy and Roger's a great dude oh, and, fantastic. and so it's it's you know it's yeah so I, I mean you I should would, be drinking that yeah right and so, so should some of the viewers right here drink drink this thing drink the oh for, <laughs> for the audio folks Bodizafa IPA it uh, we I mean we call it Bodhi. But it's a great. Uh, it comes in the orange can, so it's it's good stuff. But I mean, people know Georgetown from Manny's Pale Ale. That's the one that, uh, that you know put them on the map for for years. But but <laughs> so beer, beer and fly fishing. Beer and fly of, fishing. So anyway, the dry fly guys, June, July. 
you can come in fall. I mean, there's a lot of guys come that when you guys, when you, when this trip's over uh, in the fall, um, that are dry fly soft tackle guys. Yeah. So you could, so that, that October period, super cool. Again, le- far less traffic than June and July is, is fantastic fishing, but a, the peak season, lots and lots and lots of pressure, sure. lots of people. But that, yeah, so the guys will come over and um, swing a soft tackle, swing a trout spay rod with a streamer to leech, and then um, we did that when the, the last time you and I fished. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we swung in the morning and then dry fly in the afternoon. So that's a pretty common yeah. combo anymore. You see lots of Washington guys doing that. They're coming over from Spokane and farther west out here to Seattle as well. So, ah, okay, that reminds me, because we were talking about this. That was in 2018. And then, because we did not fish together in 2019. Correct. And then 2017 was the day of epic fly fishing. You think it was in 17? 17 is when we had that crazy betis hatch that, yeah. I mean, just, like, I destroyed fish on the dry yeah, fly. I remember, and yeah. And you were, like, serving up smoked salmon and cheese and yeah. crackers, and oh, the yeah. betas were even landing on oh, that. Oh, that's right. We got like, a photo of that. Yeah, I forgot was, that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I remember so that, that was okay. 17. 17. I will look for that. I'm, been doing some photo collating, so I will, I will look. I just went through most of eighteen photos. Listeners yesterday. might think we're crazy right now, but but people like it. When you spend a lot of days on the water, they just start to melt together. It's, yes, you know. But there's a few that stand I out. I remember, yeah, yeah, I remember. That's so, called contextual memory. Yeah, like I wouldn't remember that unless I was sitting across from you and we we're talking about it. That's that's what one of the memory experts in my boat told me once. Yeah, it's like how can I remember. Like when somebody's, I just said, I don't think about that stuff at home, about those moments. And he sure. said, that's contextual yeah. memory. Oh, yeah, yeah. You only think about it and you open up the Rolodex, your mental Rolodex and, and Blake Merwin, and then all the stories that you and I have had, have things happen together. Yeah. Those come those Conte- come to mind. It's memory by association. And yep. so, th- I mean, so, um, so I work at a church, yep. right? And I, I mean, people are always impressed that I remember, for the most part, I remember their names. And I know, I know hundreds, if yeah. not thousands of yeah. people's names, and like, and I can remember people's names because I I had heard a long time ago that if that you can remember someone's name if there's an association, absolutely. And so I, you know, so I would meet someone, and I really want to remember their name because names are important. Yeah. They're important to me, and they're important to, to Absol- people. Absolutely. And so I would I would learn something about them in our short conversation yes. that that then I can be like, okay. You know, Sally, you know, works at Fred Meyer. Yeah. And it's like Sally Fred Meyer. And, and then, yeah. then when I saw Sally, there's an association. Yeah. And, and then I can remember her name. If I just know, if I know her first name and last name, I'm not going to remember her. Right. Um, it's that association. It's Mark from Headhunters. Yeah. It's not Mark Reisler. It's yeah. Mark from Headhunters. And that's how I can remember yeah. it is that association. And, and so... Um, and it really helps with, with, with memory reinforcement and being able to, to remember people's names and all that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, con- the con- contextualization, it's, yeah. you yeah. have a context to it. The context to the memory helps, you know, bring, bring all that all stuff of that. to, the, yeah, to yeah. the forefront. Okay. Yeah. So this last year, yes, I spent a lot of time fishing two handers yep. and I had a lot of fun on the Missouri swinging flies. Yep. Um, uh, I fished the new salt, uh, I'm not salt, this new sage uh, Trout Spay HD. Yes. And I fished the three weight, loved it. Yep. I mean, the 11 footer, that yeah. rod was just, I mean, it was a super fun rod it's to fish. Big, yeah. Oh my gosh. But the other thing was that they have a one weight. Yes. A one weight out. And I fished the one weight and I had a, I had the Rio Trout Spay line on yes. it. Uh, with just a really, uh, with, I had the, um, the new Rio, um, replacement, uh, replacement tip it's a 10 foot five you know they call it a five weight or whatever so i think it means it's 55 grains or something like that uh and it's an it was the intermediate tip and i was using that just swinging soft tackles and you know you know so people think oh one way trout spay that's a novel thing you know but actually trout with trout when it comes to trout spay world you know those fish kind of those rods fight fish kind of like a rod and a half or maybe two rods heavier so um but the first fish I hooked was below Mountain Palace on this big bend, and it was a rainbow because I saw it jump, mm-hmm. and it hit the soft tackle that I was swinging. And I mean, before the before I felt the fish hit, 
the line was peeling off the reel. Like, it was like a steelhead. Yeah. It just, like, started ripping line off the reel. I had one of, the, one of these new classic um, sage uh, trout Cut spay, spay reels. reels. Yeah. And, like, yeah, the thing yeah. was just ripping line. And then it jumps, and then it goes to jump again, and, and, and the, the hook comes flying out as it makes its second jump. And I was like, I'm like, oh, my goodness. A 17-inch trout made me yeah. feel yeah. like I hooked a 17-pound steelhead. Like, yeah. it was – it was, I mean, it was the highlight of the day, even though the day ended with some incredible – dry fly fishing with these pale caddis it was you know it was incredible but but that one memory was just seared in my mind okay I so trout yeah. bay has been i mean it's it's taken off you guys yeah. do a lot of we it we do yeah you have some guides that yeah are world class we, in we're it. very fortunate yes. so i mean talk tell 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 listeners a little yeah. bit about like you know trout bay what it is what's going on uh who you got on you know you know on the team yeah what you guys are doing with that i mean yeah i remember Ever, I remember this last fall, you guys even did like a huge spay, we did a trout spay weekend, camp, yeah, camp yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Sounded so super cool. Hundred people came, so, which was great to see so that. Yeah, give us the lowdown. Like so a trout spay. I um, mean, just continuation of the tra- of the spay game. Um, now one, two, three, four weights, uh, but two threes. I mean, three is probably our biggest seller. Yeah, um, sure. And that 11, Same with 11 us. and a half. Yeah. yeah, but absolutely ones and twos for swinging soft tackles and stuff, which is super fun. Which I do as well. I love that one weight. Um, Trout Spay HD at Sage. Uh, so it's a really, it's been a super big thing. You know, my business partner was, a, was from Tacoma and has been a longtime spay caster. So he brought kind of the original knowledge for us to, uh, from the shop. I, I grew up in, the, in a family. It was a spay casting family, but I wasn't. I, my father was. I was, yeah, I was interested in skiing and girls and, and, uh, skiing and girls. girls. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. 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 And hunting. I was, yeah. That was, yeah. I, was, yeah. <laughs> I love to go fishing, but it's because I like beef jerky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, uh, yeah, so we've been doing it 10 years, and so we've kind of seen the whole evolution of, of it come to, you know, down from the seven, sixes, fives, fours, and now into the Trout Spay Range. And, and so we love doing that because it's a really great river to swing a fly in. It works great with streamers. So that's, you know, that three and four weight, and then those ones and twos and threes with swinging a soft tackle for any of the mayfly stuff or the caddis stuff or that emergence, which is just a kick as you – as you well know, so yeah, we're been fortunate. Not only do we have John, who's a, a, a you know, who's a, you know, guiding in in the state of Washington steelhead in the, you know in the late '80s with the spay rod, and talking about the difficulties of trying to teach somebody with a you know 15, 16 foot rod, you know, guy that has you know <laughs> fished a single hander a lot, you know, yeah. he said it was just impossible. It's like throwing, you know, it was days until the guy could make a you know a cast. <laughs> We're very fortunate now, you know, it's really minutes and the guy, right. people are making out casts that are effective enough to catch fish, right. which, so the learning curve is great. Okay, so you know? question about like trout spay rods. Do you think like just the new development of these, of the rods, is that because of the, um, is that because of what, what manufacturers are able to do on the line, like the fly line side? Or, I mean, what do you... I think the rods were leading, yeah. I think the fly lines have caught up. Okay. Yeah, they were able, they were making those ones and twos and threes, certainly before the appropriate lines were manufactured. And I and I think there's always been just a year or two lag on that. But, you know, certainly the Rio product and the SA product and, and the OPT, OPST, you know, so there's yeah. some manufacturers that are really focused on the line side. And, and so, you know, line technology the last 10, 15 years rod technology it's, has been great but i would argue that line lines. technology is just as you well know being connected with rio as well that it is just fantastic yeah i mean it's so cool the things they're doing and they're and they're rethinking tapers and yeah there's stuff out there that is vastly different i mean a rod is a rod is a rod the technology is coming the dampening materials and and some of the tapers there but but the line stuff is Okay, so if you're listening, yeah. if you're listening in, like yeah. take note of that. If you are casting the same line that you've been casting for oh, the last don't eight oh, years, my goodness, <laughs> you might want to rethink that because there's some new stuff that uh, that's out that will just be it's revolutionary. It, it, I mean, it, yeah. it really ups the performance game for sure. What I think about line and and rod technology the same way. People say like, do I really need that rod if they're rod shopping or line shopping? And I say. You know, the great thing about technology is it makes everybody better at whatever level. It makes your novice better. It makes your expert better. You know, some of the raw yeah. dampening technologies. I mean, so it's taking out the sine wave on the back cast, on the front cast. So you are pulling string faster, therefore loading the rod, therefore casting better. I mean, so it 
it ups everybody's game at every level. So you don't mm-hmm. have to be an expert, you know, and you're like, oh, I would never be able to feel that rod technology. Uh, yeah, 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 but yeah, yeah, you will. Yeah, You'll you will. see it too. Yeah. You're yeah, not totally. going to feel it. So I think you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when, when people say you know, I don't think I should buy a high end line, a hundred and thirty nine dollar line. Why do I need that? Well, if you want the ultimate performance, I mean, you just bought really beautiful tires for your car. Right. You know, you get new socks once in a while, and those are those <laughs> feel good. I love new. socks. They're the best. Oh That's like a new fly I can't line. You yeah, that. Love, who doesn't yeah. love? They, the first time, right. I don't even wash them. I just put them on. It feels so good. Right. My wife is aghast. She wants to wash them first, but no, no. I skipped that. It'll yeah, get yeah, washed yeah. after I yeah, wear them. So <laughs> yeah, you can't wear them two days in a row. You got you right. get one day right. and then one, wash them, but <laughs> but you got to just wear them right immediately. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. That line and and raw, I mean the rod technology and line technology is it helps everybody at yeah. every level. Yeah, it's great. It's great when that when that when the some of those oh uh, not that what was the previous to the uh, to the X was the um, was the Sage One? The Sage One, yeah. Yeah, I remember watching people to, uh, cast um, intermediate caster um, go through a couple of rods, and and just with that dampening uh, technology, I could see you know the rod come back to center mm. softly, and then I immediately I could just see less sine wave in the back cast. I, I felt like, like the one was a game changer. That was, yeah, it was. I mean, the, I know the Z axis was like you know Sage's biggest rod of all time you know at the at the at the time but um but i really felt like just the that feel was a, the that performance was the stage like, one was the game changer yeah and then yeah. i feel like the x just they capitalized on all of the things that the sage one had Polished some of those things yeah 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 totally so <coughs> um yeah no that's yeah i i agree i mean i i mean even in like steelhead world you know, I get some people that are like, hey, I have a 14 foot nine weight from, you know, 1984. Right. Well, I mean, I'm making that up. Maybe, right. maybe nine, nine, 94. 94 right, right, right. Yeah. But like, that is a radically different animal than the 12 and a half foot radically seven weight different. that yeah. is out today. And, and um, I mean, it's, it is pretty cool what the new manufacturing capabilities of fly line manufacturers have today to be able to come out with different tapers and different, you know, I mean, just, yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty wild. So technology, the way the world designs, the way that you know, I was in the ski business for a long time, and you saw it when 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 uh, a shaped skier or, or a parabolic ski came into uh, into into vogue in um, in the early '90s, and so we went from that straight ski, which was very difficult to edge and turn and initiate and all that stuff, to this operation where you turn the ski in on edge, and half the turn was built in. That is, you know, a large, uh, a large head tennis racket, large head club, you know, driver. Right. All these things. When when sports companies, recreation sports companies, started designing things from the bottom up as opposed to the top down, mm-hmm. redesign your, your race car Ferrari, and then you just dumb it down into your, you know, into my Mazda, you know, three whatever. Right. Got, yeah. Right. Um, when they started to design things for the masses, for all, for us. Yeah. You know, yeah as yeah, opposed yeah. to guys that are up here. Right. Right. Magically, things got better. Right. Whether it be a kayak or a stand-up paddleboard or a fly rod or a vehicle or a ski or a golf club or a tennis racket. Yeah. When they started designing for people who, like us, who use them, yeah, yeah. who aren't prof- you know, professionals, when they decide, that made the world a better place, man. Yeah. It did. That yeah. was a great, and that's 20 years ago when finally when sports guys was like, wait a second. Yeah. Yeah, none. I mean, none of us are Lefty Cray or Brian O'Keefe. If, if anybody's ever seen Brian O'Keefe cast, yeah, there's only like oh a gosh. few Brian O'Keefes that can do stuff like a fly rod with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the rest of us use the technology to improve <laughs> and practice. But yeah, yeah but yeah, yeah, yeah world class skiers. You know, they ski on great skis, but it's made it better for us now. Understanding when they flip flop that thing, it was big. Yeah. Man, I feel like I could talk to you for hours Man, and I hours could. and hours. How well, we, much do we just go another 45? Well, we, we I mean, we're going to in October. Okay. Like, yeah, for sure. But um, but just, man, thanks for hanging out and chatting Absolutely. through stuff today. So how can people uh, get in touch with you or, I mean, um, you know, I don't know. You have like layers and layers of people, like your security Here guards and like secretaries and all this stuff. But, but if they, you know, if they want to come out and book a trip yes. with headhunters, I mean, I've ex- – I've, I, I can vouch firsthand that your guides are incredible. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, yeah. And, you know, so if they want to book a trip, book through you. 
um, at henhuntersflyshop.com. That's the best place to do it. You can even book lodging for uh, Craig's stuff yep. out there as yep. well. So uh, it's kind of, you know, that's, that's great. Uh, we host a trip out to Headhunters in the fall. So end of September, early October, we're out there for two trips back to back and uh, we book only with the Headhunters guides, our lodgings through these guys as well. It's a great trip. I do all the cooking. Um, so it's not, it's not. I come. I enjoy it. It's yeah, not yeah. Horrible. I come for the cooking. Yeah. It's not horrible. <laughs> it's good. I mean, I, I put a lot of effort into it. Yes, um, so, um, but uh, I love it's, your it's, a, your appetizers are good too, Blake. The appetizers yeah. are good. So, uh, and you know, so it, you know that information is on the on our website as well. Uh, but definitely follow Headhunters on Instagram. Follow them on Facebook. All that kind of stuff. Um, and you know, like I mentioned earlier, don't miss those Instagram fishing reports from. Well, Mark. they'll be shortly Love coming. Them. Yes, and as soon them. as we start fishing more. So. Yeah, absolutely. And then check out their blog as well. So if you follow blogs with a, like an RSS reader or something like that, subscribe on Feedly or whatever you do to to make sure you stay up with them um, and just be able to get all their content. Uh, check out some of their some of their videos online too. They they put out some really good videos. Uh, I, I'm hoping for more though, you know. I mean, well, it should be, yeah, he's got, we have another, John has another video camera. He's good. got, yeah, so good. there could be things in the works. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's okay. Because I mean, they've made some stuff. I mean, you know, We've for made them, some they've very they've, funny ones. Yeah. They've, they've gone on the side of quality over quantity when, when it comes to videos because they're really, really good. Um, we, we are on the side of quantity and I, I you know, We'll, we'll let you all judge the There's quality. a lot of ways to win the battle, Blake. There's more than so, one path. Yeah. Okay, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you, and, Blake. Um, thanks for checking out the Gig Harbor Flycast. And we got some great uh, episodes coming up. Uh, and uh, so make sure you subscribe on iTunes, Android, wherever that you uh, download your podcast from. And uh, we're also on YouTube for all of our interviews. The monologue stuff is just going to be on audio. So make sure you're there. Thanks again. Thank you.